Chester was founded by the Romans 2,000 years ago and gets its name from an old English word, Caister, meaning fortress. A walk around the wall, a trip on the tour bus and a cruise on the D gives a perfect insight into this fascinating city. But first, let's take a look around. Chester City on the River D Chester City steeped in history quaint and pretty ancient and new Chester City welcomes you The water flows peacefully over the weir on its way out to the sea Watching the boats from the bridge on a sunny day is where I like to be The promenade bandstand and cobblestone street Sloping grass verges where fishermen meet Elegant swans make the picture complete In all their majesty Chester City on the River Dee Chester City steeped in history Quaint and pretty, ancient and new Chester City welcomes you Stroll back in time through the towers and gateways along the city wall Visit the rows of magnificent shops or a simple market stall See the cathedral reach up to the sky See how the clock catches everyone's eye After a stroll in the park you'll see why To me it has it all Chester City on the River Dee Chester City steeped in history Quaint and pretty, ancient and new Chester City Bridge takes us across the river to the groves, where we begin our walk around the wall at the recorder's steps. Turning right at the top, we find the wishing steps. Make a wish, run up and down them, and back up again without taking a breath, and your wish will come true. Not really recommended. past the watchtower as the wall bends left and heads northwards where we pass a row of 17th century timber framed houses to our left and on the outside of the wall to our right an ornamental Roman garden designed to capture the atmosphere of the time. You may also catch a glimpse of a patrolling Roman soldier marching his band of unfortunate captives to a life of slavery. The Romans are not to be taken lightly. We soon arrive at Newgate, which was built in 1938 in the design of a 14th century gateway. Below us are the foundations of a Roman tower, which probably housed a rock-throwing catapult back then. Further over to the right, we can see the remains of a Roman amphitheatre. This was discovered in 1929, after lying hidden for centuries. We can in fact make a detour and have a closer look. In Roman times, this would have been used for military displays and weapon training. 
Even nowadays, the gladiators still show no mercy to their prisoners. Back on the wall, we continue over Newgate and down the narrow passageway to Eastgate. Its famous clock was constructed in 1897 to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. The gate itself was built in 1769, replacing the original 12th century entrance. Here we can look down on Eastgate Street on the inside of the wall and Foregate Street on the outside. Further on, we see on our right Frodsham Street Car Park, which was, in Roman times, a military parade ground. To the left is the awesome Chester Cathedral. Here we can leave the wall and take a stroll through its magnificent grounds and even take a quick look inside. Returning to our route, a little further on, a ramp leads down to Abbey Street within the wall. Most of the Georgian houses here have church connections. Past here to our left is the Deanery Field, which was once a Roman army barracks. We are now approaching the northeast corner of the wall, marked by King Charles's Tower. In 1645, Charles I stood on this and witnessed the defeat of his army at the Battle of Roton Moor. The wall now takes a left-hand turn westwards. At this point, we can drop down via the steps close by to the Shropshire Union Canal, which runs alongside the northern section of the wall. This was constructed in the 1770s, when Chester was an important inland port. This area displays a section of the original Roman wall dating back to 200 AD. Back up the steps we continue our journey. To our right the sheer drop down to the canal. To our left the deanery field with the cathedral in the background. We are now approaching North Gate which stands on the site of the original Roman gate. From here we can see the bridge which carries Northgate Street over the canal. Passing over this, we can clearly see the distant hills of Wales. A momentary detour reveals Chester's own bridge of size, over which prisoners were marched prior to their execution in the late 18th century. Leaving Northgate, we continue along the line of the original Roman wall and arrive at Morgan's Mount, named after an army captain in the Civil War. Just past here is St. Martin's Gate, which, constructed in 1966, is the newest addition to the wall. This takes us over the busy main road, but at this point the original wall went south along the line of these buildings on the left. From here, steps take us down to Pemberton's Parlour, named after John Pemberton, who was Chester's mayor in 1730. We then pass the railway and are able to make another short detour to Thomas Telford's Northgate Locks, which take the canal through a 33-foot drop. We have now reached the northwestern corner of the wall, marked by Bone Walderthorne's Tower, which actually stood on the River Dee between the 12th and 15th centuries. Consequent silting, however, required another one to be built further out known as the Water Tower, which remains to this day.
A left hand turn takes us south down to ground level where we pass on our left Queen's School which was formerly the site of the city jail. To the right the impressive school playing fields. We are now approaching Watergate. Nowadays it is hard to imagine ships unloading here and tolls being charged on all goods entering the city. The present day Watergate replaced the original in 1789. Passing over Watergate Street we are greeted by the spectacle of Chester's Racecourse. Known as the Rue D, its name is derived from Old English words rude meaning cross and I meaning island. The remains of a medieval cross can be found in the middle of the circuit, hence the island of the cross. The first race took place here in 1539, making it the oldest horse racing course in the country. We soon arrive at Grosvenor Road, which we must cross to continue our walk. After crossing, to our left is Chester Castle, which stands on the site of the original one founded in 1070 by William the Conqueror to guard the Welsh borders. The wall then takes us alongside the leafy castle drive as it bends eastwards to pass County Hall, which was opened in 1957 as the headquarters for the Cheshire County Council, with the River Dee flowing past its doorstep. Just past here is Bridgegate, but just before we go over this, we're reminded of an old pack horse route into the city which once stood here known as Shipgate. It is now just a memory and a plaque. Bridgegate, which was built in 1782, takes us over Lower Bridge Street where we get a good view of the weir and the Old D Bridge. With its famous seven arches, it was built in the late 14th century. The close by section of the wall, known as the Round Tower, offers spectacular views of the Chester waterfront, which we can enjoy before finishing off our walk. distance on we arrive back at the recorded steps to complete our two mile anti-clockwise tour around the wall of this fascinating city. Having seen Chester from its wall we can now see it from a totally different perspective but first let's take a stroll through the nearby park and enjoy the peaceful scenery before arriving at our next port of call. side of the park our mechanical guide is waiting for us so let's have another look at this historic city from the top of a bus all aboard we begin at the visitor center and soon pass the Roman amphitheater which we visited earlier remember walking across Newgate we now go under it and continue towards the city centre along Pepper Street. Turning left 
into Lower Bridge Street, we see the old meeting the new before passing under Bridgegate, which we also crossed a short time ago. Travelling along Castle Drive, we get a good view of County Hall and a section of the wall close by. Junction of Castle Drive and Grosvenor Road, we pass the castle and get a clear view of the race course as we turn left over Grosvenor Bridge, which once had the longest single arch in the world. the south side of the river where our circular detour takes us through the suburbs. We then take a left and head back towards the city, past the familiar half-timbered black and white buildings. with its seven arches carries us back over the Dee to enter the city again through Bridgegate. Lower Bridge Street is another example of ancient and new with its modern shops and quaint pubs. We shortly turn left into Grosvenor Street, where we negotiate the roundabout and head north towards the Guild Hall which was originally a medieval church. This was where the western gateway of the original Roman wall stood. Passing under Watergate, we leave the city and travel around the outside of the wall, taking in the modern suburbs of Chester. <laughs> 